Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video we're going to be doing the specialist paper 1 tech free multiple choice from the 2020 external exam in the um, Queensland syllabus in Australia. So in this video I'll be going through and answering all the questions showing you how to get the correct answer. Um, I'll be taking my time with it. Now if you're in a test situation obviously you want to be doing these multiple choice questions as quickly as possible because each of them are only worth one mark. Um, but in this for this video, I'll just be going through how to answer it, and I'll pretty much be taking my time with it, okay? Right, so let's just take a look at the very first question. So if we scroll down, we've got question one here. So, the indefinite integral of integral of 3x minus a all over 1 minus x squared dx can be determined using partial fractions. The value of a is, and then you've got your multiple choice. So, the weird thing about this question is it's actually not an integration question. All it is is an algebra question. So in um, specialist, you learn how to pretty much break an integral up. So if you have something like we have here, we we'll learn to pretty much break that up into a sum of parts, pretty much. So this should be equal to the sum of these integrals here, because then you can apply natural logs to all of them, and then plus the integral of this guy here as well. But in this question here, they're not asking you to integrate everything. They're asking you just to find the value of a. Now, we can find the value of a just with some algebra. So since they're partial fractions, this means we can do some cross multiplication and break it down pretty easily. So, 3x minus a, all on. Now, I'm going to simplify this really quickly so we can see this. This is a difference of squares. I can rewrite this as 1 plus x multiplied by 1 minus x. And if you were to multiply that back out, you would get this side here. So I'm going to rewrite it as just that really quickly. So 1 minus x is equal to negative 1 on 1 plus x plus 2 on 1 minus x. Okay? If I multiply both sides by this denominator here, that whole thing's going to cancel out. One of them will cancel out over here, but you'll have the um, 1 minus x here. And it will cancel out over here, and you'll have 1 plus x. So all I've done is multiply both sides by 1 plus x and 1 minus x. So that would cancel that there. It would cancel one of them here and leave that expression. And it will cancel this one here but leave that expression. So you'll have 3x minus a is equal to negative 1. So I'll distribute that. We'll have negative 1 plus x. So all I did was distribute the negative 1 to these guys here. And then I'll distribute the 2 as well. So I'll have plus 2 plus 2x. Now, if I clean up this side here, I have 3x minus a is equal to 3x minus 1. Oh, not minus 1, plus 1, sorry. So we can see these sides are both equivalent. So that means 3x must equal 3x. So that means negative a must be equal to positive 1. So therefore, a must be negative 1. So the answer will be b. Okay. Um, hopefully you can see how I got that. I didn't even do any integration. All I did was some cross multiplication and I broke it down very easily. I'm going to rub this stuff out because I'll be needing it in the second question here. Um, if you have any questions about that, just leave some in the comments and I'll hopefully respond to you as soon as I can. Um, but otherwise, try and rewind the video and see what I did there rather than me re-explaining it again. Okay, so question two. When using proof by mathematical induction, show that this is divisible by three. The inductive step proves. So, we're not pretty much proving anything at the moment. We're just asked for the inductive step. Now, the inductive step, in proof by induction, you show, uh, you show it's true for n equals 1. You show it's true when you let n equal k. And the inductive step is when you go n equals k plus 1. Okay? So, all we're doing for this step here is substituting this into that expression there. Okay? So, I'm going to rub this stuff out. So, all we're going to go through is replace n with k plus 1, pretty much. So, I'll just write here, n equals k plus 1. Now, if we substitute this in here, we'll have k plus 1. That's that n there. Multiply by 2. Now, multiply by k plus 1, because that 2 is being multiplied by that n. So, it's going to be multiplied by k plus 1. And then you still have that minus 1 there. Same thing here. You're going to have 2 multiplied by k plus 1. Brackets, plus 1. And another brackets. Now, we're going to start tying this up. So, when looking at this stuff here, you can see some common, like, things we have already. We've got a k plus 1 in all of them, okay? So, let's start cleaning up. So, k plus 1 
if I distribute this 2, I'm going to have 2k plus 2 minus 1, so I'll have a plus 1 there. And same here, I'll have 2k plus 2 plus 1, so I'll have plus 3. So if I take a look at all the answers here, I can see, okay, these two don't have my 2k plus 1. This one does, but it doesn't have my 2k plus 3, it has a 2k plus 2, so the answer is D. And you'll see that is exactly the same as that, okay? So we didn't do any proofs really, all we did was the inductive step pretty much, okay? Now let's take a look at question 3. So, according to a recent census, the mean hours worked per week by all Australian workers is 35.6 hours. A mean of 36.1 hours worked per week is calculated from a random sample. So, what we got to do is pretty much, alright, associate a census with that number and the word, where is it? Uh, random selection. Oh, they said selection, not sample. So, when they say random selection, that is pretty much a sample, okay? So, if we take a look at what we have here, we've got all these crazy things. So, x bar means the mean of the sample, okay? Now, mu means the mean of the population, okay? So, that's the important thing. So, this question is just asking pretty much for some terminology, pretty much. So, the population is going to be mu, which is 35.6, because they're saying, according to this recent census, that's the entire population. That's their mean. According to their random selection, which is their sample, x bar is going to be 36.1. And now we just go through and be like, okay, what do they have here? This one has our numbers, but they're in the wrong order, pretty much. So it can't be that one. This one, I don't know what they're doing there. Don't need capital X, and don't need capital X here. Now, if you take a look at C, it's exactly what we have here. So C is the correct answer for question three, okay? Right, let's take a look at four real quick. So consider the points A, B, points A and B shown. The position vector representing the midpoint. Now, this question is actually wrong, but I can kind of work out how you would get to the correct answer, but just know this question is wrong. Like none of these here are the actual correct answer, and I'll show you why. So. The midpoint of, let's try and draw a vector, that's a terrible vector, connect these points here. Now I don't believe they did this on purpose, I generally believe this is just an error in the paper, and you'll see why here. So that's the vector O to A, and that's the vector O to B. So we want the midpoint of B, A, B. Now they don't specify what direction, but it doesn't really matter because you could work it out. So that here is a vector A to B, and we want that midpoint there. Okay. So, A to B, geometrically we can see, is going from A to O, so that would be negative O to A, plus O to B. Now, we know what these points are, we can actually read it off. The point A, so O to A, we can see doesn't have an X component, so it's 0, and it has a Y component of 5, and a Z component of 20. O to B, we can also read off our diagram here. It has an X component of 10, a Y component of 12, and it doesn't have a Z component, so there's no height. So if we substitute into here, we're going to get negative 0, 5, 20, plus 10, uh, what was that, 12? Yep, 12, 0. Okay, so A to B is negative 10, um, 5 minus 12 is 7, and then negative 20. Now the midpoint would be halfway, so divide that by 2, we get negative 5, um, 7 on 2, and um, negative 10. This would be the correct answer, okay? This would be the midpoint, so a half of A to B, which is the midpoint, that's the definition. So we can see here, some of these numbers aren't matching up. 8.5 is not equal to 7 on 2. So we can already see every single answer here is technically wrong. But you can see these numbers are the same. They're just in different directions. okay? Because they didn't specify where. So the correct answer is A. The only thing wrong with this question is just the Y component's wrong. It's not 8.5. Because 7 over 2, that's about 3.5. 
So that's how you would answer question four if this was given an exam. Now they probably won't give a question like this again where there's an error in it, but this is how you could probably work out the rough answer, okay? Because you can see these numbers are the same, okay? They probably just forgot to type it in. Anyway, let's move on to question five. All right, so determine and they give you an integral. So the first thing you're gonna do is do a u sub. So look for the biggest algebraic expression. So the biggest algebraic expression is 3x squared plus 5, and it's all in a cube, so you're going to look for like an inside function. So let u equal 3x squared plus 5. Now I want to get a du, so I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x, so I'll have du dx. Differentiating this, bring the power down the front, so I'll have 6, minus the power by 1, so I'll have x. Differentiating a constant is 0, so that remains the same. Now I'm going to rearrange this to get dx as the subject, because if I were to substitute a now, this is what I would get, 4x u3 dx. And I can't integrate just yet, because I've got dx here. If I rearrange this, dx is equal to d, oh, that's a 6, sorry, du on 6x. Now if I substitute that in, this is what I get, 4x u cubed du on 6x and you can see those x's cancel out. Bring the 4 on 6 out the front and this is the integral you get. Apply integration, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, you get 4 on 6 u to the 4 on 4 plus c. Now you can distribute this if you want to but this times a constant will be another constant so you can leave that as a plus c. So you're going to cross cancel those and you get u to the 4 on 6 plus c. Now this c is different to this c up here because you multiply by this number, but we can still represent it as c because it's still an arbitrary constant. Now remember what our u was, our u was this guy up here, so our answer is 3x squared plus 5 all on 6 to the power of 4 plus c. And if we go through, we see the answer is a. Okay. Now I'm going to rub that stuff out because I'm going to need some working for question 6 as well. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about that one or want to learn new substitution, um, I'll probably leave a link to a video on how to do that. Um, I've covered it previously, but not in uh, exam conditions. So, let's take a look at question 6. Question 6 we can see as complex numbers. So, given z is this and w is this, calculate this. So, we need to work out what is what. So, W bar means a conjugate. So the conjugate basically means is if you have W is A plus B I, the conjugate is pretty much the negative imaginary component. So you go W bar, the A still remains the same, but you flip the sign of this, so it'll be negative B I. So we're given just W in this case here as what are we given? Three negative three. W is negative three plus I. So that means w bar, the conjugate, will be negative 3 minus i. So you see I just flipped the sign of that, okay? So z squared is just going to be this complex number times itself. So we'll have 2 minus 2i multiplied by 2 minus 2i. Now we're just going to do first out in inner last. Multiply these numbers together, you get 4. Multiply these numbers together, you get negative 4i. Multiply these numbers together, you get negative 4i again. And multiply these two numbers, you get positive 4i squared. Now recall i is the square root of negative 1. So if you squared both sides, i squared is just negative 1. So what we have here is 4 minus 8i minus 4. That cancels. So that means z squared is just negative 8i. Okay? And hopefully you can see how I got that. So when we have z squared minus the conjugate of w, you're going to have negative 8i minus brackets and put that whole thing in there. Negative 3 minus i. So you're going to get positive 3 and distribute that negative. So you're going to have positive i plus negative um, 8i. So you have negative 7i. So the answer will be b. Okay. Let's take a look at question 7 now. So 7, it is a slope field. Now, slope fields, I wouldn't start sketching these straight away. I would start looking for characteristics in the diagram. So, what we're going to look for is pretty much, the, pretty much how the numbers change. So, we agree this side, x is positive, and this side, x is negative. So, on this side here, 
when x is positive, dy dx is positive, is it not? Now, on this side here, when x is negative, dy dx is still positive. So that means there's an x squared term in here, okay? Or some even term. Now, if we look at our answers here, we can see, all right, that one's got an x squared, and so does that one. So I'm eliminating these guys here because if I put an x is negative 5, that would dominate that there, and you'd have a negative gradient there. So you'd have like negative ones here. So it cannot be A or B straight away, okay? Now we just look at a Y. So when Y is positive, um, the gradient is still positive. So dy dx is positive, okay? Now when y is negative, the gradient, dy dx, as we can see here, is negative. So that means there's no y squared term. So looking at these two answers, it's going to be C because you've got y, which isn't squared, and you've got an x squared term. So the answer, the correct answer is C. This best represents this slope field purely off this stuff here, okay? Um, let's move on now to question eight. If you have any more questions about this one, leave some in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them, okay? Or I might make a separate video on this stuff. Right, question eight. An equation of a line passes through the points A and B. Okay, so this is just pretty much your vector line stuff. So, consider this is the zero, zero origin and we go up to the point, let's say B, and we go to A. So let's try and work out the equation of this line. So the equation of a line is your position vector plus your direction vector. Now, I'm going to say B is your position vector because it's the equation of line passing through these two points. So you can, you can pretty much choose one or the other. So let's just go with um, B in this case here. So our position vector is going to be B. So we'll have 3, negative 2, 1, plus the multiples of our direction vector. Now our direction vector is the vector b to a. So b to a is negative o to b plus o to a. Okay. So minus this vector, so we'll have negative 3, negative 2, 1 plus a which is 2, 4, 5. I'm going to get rid of our diagram now because we don't need it. Um, so this is going to be negative 1, this is going to be um, positive 6, and this is going to be positive 4. So my direction vector is that. So I've got negative 1, 6, and 4. Okay. Now I'm going to rub that out again because I need more room and there's not much here on the bit of paper. So um, now we've got to pretty much work it out. So we, can't, we can see already... Um, we've got different stuff here. So what I'm going to do is pretty much work it out in Cartesian form because I can already see our answer might be D straight away because let's break this down into um, parametric form. So the X components, X is equal to 3 minus lambda. You can get that from that top row there. Y is negative 2 plus 6 lambda and Z is 1 plus 4 lambda. Now to get it in Cartesian form, you need to make lambda the subject. So Lambda is going to be x minus 3 on negative 1. Um, y, uh, make this lambda, you're going to have y plus 2 on 6. Making this lambda, you're going to have z minus 1. Minus 1. Just run out of room there. z minus 1 on 4 equals lambda. And we can see if we made all these equal to each other, we can see our answer is D. Okay? So that's the answer to that question there. Question 9. Um, the, the scores on a test are assumed to be normally distributed. The researchers use the results from a random samples of scores to calculate a confidence interval for a, mean, a population mean. However, the shorter the confidence interval width is a shorter confidence inf interval width is required so the researchers decide to use a second sample for their calculations. Assuming the standard deviation and both samples are the same, the researchers can ensure a shorter confidence interval by 
this a shorter confidence interval is produced by and then you're given your stuff here so let's work out what a confidence interval will mean so if we go over to this slide here on your formula sheet this is your formula for confidence intervals here so we're assuming the size is the same uh not the size sorry <laughs> the standard deviation and stuff is the same so a confidence interval pretty much means your mean plus or minus the stand, the z score times that standard deviation on the square root of the um, sample size. So if we look in here, let's rewrite that there. So x is equal to, uh, oh no, x, your confidence interval is x plus or minus your z score on your standard deviation on that squared. So n is your sample size. So if you want to decrease, now they said they wanted a smaller confidence level so if you d if you have a bigger bar your confidence is going to be very high but like you're not as accurate because you're like taking a huge range so you might be like 95 percent confidence but your bar might be very like large like this but if you have it like this your confidence will be a lot smaller so if you make this number as well pretty much as big as possible you're going to get a sorry um oh this one stumbled me a bit um the increase in the sample size and decrease in Yeah, okay. So if you are increasing your sample size, this number gets bigger. In turn, the width gets bigger. So it'll be x plus this and x minus this here. Uh, square root on n. So if you increase your sample size, this number gets smaller because it's one over that, okay? So if you increase the sample size, your confidence is going to decrease because the width of the bar will be like this because it's one over your sample size. So if you increase your sample size, your confidence decreases because you're going to have a width like this if you decrease your sample your confidence will be higher so if i'm increasing the sample size i'm decreasing the confidence level so the answer is going to be c because d is just wrong and a is also wrong and so is b okay um yeah, if you have any more questions on this one, um, just leave some in the comments. I probably can do a better job at explaining that one, but I've still got to do another question. And yeah, all good. Okay, so let's take a look at question 10 real quick. So the subset of the complex plane represents this for Z is this. Okay, so when working this out, when drawing one of these, arg means pretty much angle most of the time. So... All you got to do to work out its position is pretty much flip the signs of these. So normally what we have here is Z plus I minus one. So that means we're looking for a position at negative I and positive one. So the answer cannot be C or D because they have the position negative one, positive I for both of them. So negative one, positive I. So it can only be A or B. Just purely off that stuff. Because we can both see this is negative i. And this is positive 1. Same with this one here. Now. The angle will be different. So here we have positive pi on 4. And here we have negative pi on 4. Because it's positive here. It needs to be negative. So the answer is b. Okay. Right. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And you learned something from it. Um, I'll probably 
make a separate video explaining question 9 better and question 10 better. Um, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this was helpful. Um, yep. Yeah.